Generation. My name is Day, and I'm really glad you're here. Before I go on, if you appreciate the content, if you surf through and like my videos, make sure that you support by subscribing, liking, sharing, and of course, commenting. Thank you so much if you trickle down from other social medias like Facebook or TikTok or Instagram. I haven't done a video in a while, and I thought that today's video was very important to touch on. Recently, Candace O from Daily Wire came out with a documentary called BLM or Black Lives Matter, the greatest lie ever sold. I'm doing this video because number one, I want to give you my honest opinion about the documentary. And number two, because I know there are many people that need to hear this information but will not pay the $14 subscription to Daily Wire because they either don't subscribe to the conservative narrative or they just don't like the people on there like Shapiro or Walsh or Owens. I know that a lot of you don't like Candace Owens. I personally agree with a lot of the things she says, not all, but I do have an issue with her delivery at times. I think it could be harsh. I think it can be a little too rough for my taste. I'm not saying that's how you should feel. I'm just talking about my taste and how I like to be approached and how I like to be told things. The documentary touches almost exclusively on George Floyd because this is the event that took BLM to rise and place the organization on the map. Now, a lot of people say, let's get this right off the bat. A lot of people say, well, you know what, BLM, the organization made its mistakes, don't need to watch the video, but you know what, I separate the organization from the message, from the actual slogan, because BLM is a movement far beyond the organization. I don't have a problem with that. And I understand that there needs to be a distinction because as you will see, if you watch a documentary or if you finish this video, BLM has really let a lot of people down the organization. But just as you say the organization should be separate from the actual movement, then you should separate the message from the messenger in this case and actually take a, a moment to listen to what Candace Owens actually has to say about BLM. Because although you may not like her, you will discover a lot of things with receipts in this documentary that will have you wondering if you still support the movement or the organization, why, why, and what led you to do that and leads you to continue to support the BLM narrative. Now, I'm not saying black lives don't matter. Of course, black lives matter. We all know all lives matter. And I know a lot of you have a problem with all lives matter, but it's the truth. All lives do matter, including black lives. Now, the documentary, as I was saying, touches on George Floyd, which is the event that takes Black Lives Matter to center stage, the riots and all the activism they participated in. The documentary talks about the finances of Black Lives Matter because this is an organization that actually collected a lot of money from its donors. A lot of people, including myself, empathized at one moment, especially in the beginning, with the Black Lives Matter narrative. It's a social slogan. It inspires you to care for someone. And they did make it seem that if you didn't support Black Lives Matter, then you are a racist. Now, Candace goes in detail through the finances. I'm not going to put any, any actual videos from the video, any images from the video. You're gonna have to watch it yourself. She goes through the finances, okay? And you can look up the documentary and see the receipts for yourself. She goes through the financing of the BLM organization. She exposes the members of the BLM organization and their odd handling of the money. Now, there are million dollar homes, we all know this, but did you know that there's a $6 million home that was purchased from another BLM member that purchased the same home days before, as per the documentary, for $3 million? So a member of the BLM team actually purchases a home for $3 million and 
a few days later, sells it to another BLM member for $6 million. That sounds a little suspicious to me. I don't know about you. It also touches on the fact that BLM did donate to a lot of different organizations, a lot of organizations that did include black people. However, these organizations in, its, in their majority support only LGBTQ plus community members. So $200,000 here, $500,000 there, and none of these donations actually went to schools, lunches, community service for black children, black families who could have really used the $80 million that were collected during that year. Now, there are homes that were purchased in Canada, million dollar homes that were purchased in Canada. These organizations that the donations were made to, these are organizations that have failed to file because they have ex tax exempt status. They are nonprofit ORGs. They have failed to file status of their finances. So nobody really knows where the money's gone that BLM has given to these organizations. Also, when Candace calls the organizations, no one answers the phone any of them, but one, one which goes on to tell Candace in detail. Of course, Candace pretended to be someone else. She pretended to be someone who was interested in, do in, in donating money. They tell her in detail how they financially support protesters, how they bring protesters in buses and how they paid for people's bail when they got in prison, when they were arrested. There are so many things in this documentary that are, that are eye-opening. There's footage that proves that George Floyd was saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, even when he was inside the car. And it was George Floyd himself that asked to be placed on the floor because he claimed he was claustrophobic. And once again, we see in the documentary that George Floyd died of an overdose. And the examiner says that he had fatal doses of fentanyl in his system. I don't know how you feel about all this, but the fact that Patrice Cullors, her wife, and the other BLM founders are using the money as they please, and no one really knows exactly how, it's very disturbing. Seeing that this money did not go at all to anyone related to George Floyd. In fact, his roommates were saying that even George Floyd's family hasn't been to George Floyd's home where he lived to pick up his belongings. And we could even see his car sitting there in the driveway because they didn't have the title or anything. His roommates, his ex-roommates, didn't couldn't move it. So Candace Owens ended up paying for the rent, one year of rent, which would have been what George Floyd would have you know, contributed to the home where three people, where he lived with two other roommates. And she actually paid for a service to come out and tow his car that was just sitting there in the driveway. No one from the BLM organization, as she states in the documentary, bothered to come to his home and realize that the bills were not paid. George Floyd, the face, the face on which they collected millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. They didn't bother to come to his home to actually see how he lived, how this hero that they portrayed lived. A hero that we have to really just mention this, unfortunately, was arrested because he was trying to pay with a counterfeit, a counterfeit bill. So he was caught in illegal activity. He resisted arrest for eight minutes before backup was called. He said he couldn't breathe from the beginning. He asked to be taken out of the car and put on the floor from the begin from himself. And he died of an overdose. Now, how many lies have we been told by the media over and over again? Black lives do matter, but they don't matter to the BLM organization. And I believe this documentary is key in proving that. And it's amazing the way that she brings the receipts. I'm glad that she stuck with George Floyd, although I would have liked to see the other uh, people that have been victimized by the BLM organization. It shows that the BLM organization is really linked, intertwined with the Democratic Party. She leaves it just kind of to draw your own conclusions, but it is very clear that that's what's going on. There are many details in there that, of course, I won't be able to tell you in this short video, but I do encourage you to watch it. If you really support the BLM organization, you should watch this documentary because it has 
all sorts of information that you need to know, especially if you donated money to the BLM organization. How many schools near you got money, got funded, while these people were purchasing homes in Canada, in California, and not $200,000 homes, $6 million homes. They bought homes and properties in California and other, space, and other places to host retreats that they never held. And after not even holding retreats, said in their website, the website, all this is shown in the documentary, we haven't been able to hold a retreat because our host had, you know, a, a, some sort of medical issue. And then COVID came. And even though they couldn't host a retreat in that property, they purchased the property next to it. God knows that they've been holding retreats. They look like phantom organizations to me that BLM actually endorses. So suspicious. And meanwhile, black kids are still struggling and none of this money went to any black kids, black families, victims of police shooting, families of victims of police shooting. And so what is the goal of BLM really? This Marxist, self-proclaimed Marxist organization. I'll let you draw your own conclusions, but two things that I, not that I didn't like, but that I, I want to touch on, I think the documentary, and I understand that they have a paid subscription system, that's how they work, but I do believe that this documentary should be made public, should be made free for people to watch because people need to hear this information. BLM has been utilized by the media and politicians to push an agenda to victimize black people. They cite reports and studies written by people who are partial to their narrative and agenda. I get a lot of people, a lot of you send me things, reports and studies proving systemic racism, proving. And when you look back, I have yet to see one single report or study that coincides with the BLM narrative that comes from an unbiased source. Again, I encourage you to watch this documentary because it is very eye-opening. Look beyond the fact that you may or may not like Candace Owens, her delivery, her person, her narrative, whatever it is, I really, really encourage you to just put that on stop, put that aside and listen to the message and look at the proof that's in your face. And then let me know if you still think that BLM is an organization worth supporting. I personally, don't think so. And I have felt like this for a very long time, especially after learning that BLM idolizes communist leaders like Fidel Castro, Maduro. And if you're familiar with communism, if you watch the documentary, you will clearly see the same tactics being implemented in the MO of this organization. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if this video was helpful. I really hope that you like the rest of my content as well. Make sure again that you subscribe and like and see you next time. Now is my time to shine. Let's when your time comes, don't postpone it. When others doubt and out, you don't condone it. Truth be told, yourself is your toughest opponent. When your moment comes, grab hold and own it. Never let go.